Hey guys, it's Rose. I wanted to do a review today. I don't do a lot of these, mostly because I don't often read very new books, and so I don't know how useful straight reviews would be. However, this month, I read this. The Girl in the Spider's Web by David Lagerkrantz. The Girl in the Spider's Web is a continuation of the Millennium series, aka The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo books. It's written partially by Steve Larson, who wrote the first three, but unfortunately he passed away before he could finish it, which is why it's been picked up and completed by David Lagerkrantz. This is a really interesting thing that can happen if an author passes away before finishing their work is that you get someone else and you try to write it in the same style and tone, but we don't know how much of this is from the original brain of Mr. Larson, how much of it's been added or edited, and it definitely feels a little bit different. The original trilogy actually wrapped up fairly well, so I was quite surprised when they mentioned another book coming out because it didn't seem totally necessary, and I'm not a fan of continuing series, whether it's book series, TV series, uh, series of movies. I don't want it to keep going just for the sake of it, but I absolutely love the characters in the first three, I absolutely love the way they're written, they're so fast-paced, they're so engaging, and I really wanted to see if this would carry that forward. Unfortunately, it really didn't quite do it for me. The biggest criticism that I would level at the book is that it's got, right on the cover here, a Lisbeth Salander novel. However, there's very little Lisbeth Salander in it. This would be much better described as a Michael Blomkist novel, because it's all about him. It focuses on him. We get bits of Lisbeth. We get she's involved, but it's not focused on her or even balanced between her and Blomkist like the original three were. So I, it really bothered me, because part of the reason that I loved the first three books is that I love that character. And I was really sad that we just didn't get enough of her at all. The pacing was also kind of off for me. The original trilogy does have a lot of quite detailed information on business connections, networks, um, quite complex behind-the-scenes information on these plots that Blomkist and Salander are uncovering and crimes that they are solving, but it never feels very dry. It doesn't feel too procedural. It feels like you're getting enough to really understand it, um, but not so much that you're just like, okay, I don't really care who's the CFO of this company that's connected to this company that's owned by this guy who owns this company that's vaguely connected to, like, A Girl on the Spider's Web, it, it got that kind of pacing and that balance very wrong. I found it really hard to get into because there was so much of this exposition on company connections and little bits of business that I just, I found it quite overwhelming toward the beginning. Then some of the more interesting, exciting, fast-paced bits there, there wasn't enough of them. The stuff that made the original trilogy really great, the balance just didn't carry over into this new book, which made me really sad. It was kind of cool to see where some of the characters were going and what was going on with them. One of the main purposes of this book, I think, is to deal with a little bit of a plot tale that was left from the original trilogy. I won't say what it is, because that is a bit of a spoiler for the book, and it is very new, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but it definitely felt like they were taking this loose end from the trilogy and starting to tie it up, but not succeeding. The book doesn't actually end with this really any more explained or sorted out than it began. It's just really brought it to the forefront of your mind, so you're left thinking, oh yeah, that was never resolved. What the? I want to know what goes on now. Maybe this is because this was meant to be one in a very long series. This was meant to introduce, sort of remind us that this hasn't been resolved 
so that it can then be properly resolved in future. If that's the case, I, I don't feel like this is the author to continue it. And I feel like it would be really, really difficult too as well. And it's one thing to expand a character's story in a totally new way or to finish to complete a half written manuscript. It's a totally different thing to try and guess where the original author was going with this story. I, I don't think that Lagerkrantz is necessarily the person to do that. I just ended up with a little bit of a feeling that this was something that Steve Larson had intended to do a lot more work on, and that work and balancing and, and pacing and explanation and character development wasn't really done by the new author. And that's not to say that this is his fault. Obviously, this is someone who's dealing with a really difficult situation. We don't know how much he was left with. We don't know how far along Larson was. We also don't know what the editors or the publishers were thinking of doing with it or how much input they have. And I don't want to sound like I'm slamming Lagerkrantz as a new author. I think he may well have done an incredible job of a really difficult situation, but unfortunately the book just doesn't live up to the original trilogy. And I kind of feel like that was going to be an issue no matter what. It's so, so difficult to try and live up to those things. So I'm not trying to blame the new author at all, but it just wasn't a book that really made me happy. There were some elements that were great, obviously. I mean, it's not, this isn't a bad book. This isn't a book that was really difficult to read or that I hated or that I really didn't like. If this book was more of a standalone, I don't know how that would work with the plot, but bear with me, I'll explain what I mean. If it was more of a standalone, then I would probably really have quite liked it. Unfortunately, these books, the original three books, were almost perfect. They were incredible. They were some of the best books that I've read in a long time. And trying to live up to that with a new book, the chances were never very good. And unfortunately, it didn't really succeed. Because of that, I don't really think that this is a book I would hugely recommend. I would consider recommending it if you really love the character of Michael Blomkist, then you would probably love it. It also has an ending that made me annoyed. I'm not going to say exactly what it is because, spoilers, but the ending felt quite Hollywoodized, if that makes sense. It felt very much like almost like a wish fulfillment ending rather than the more realistic endings that we saw in the first three books. And that was it's a little niggle in the corner of my mind because I, oh, if you are looking for a lot more of Elizabeth Salander or if you're expecting it to be of the same caliber as the original three, I wouldn't recommend this one. I think you may end up a little disappointed like I did. Those are my thoughts on The Girl in the Spider's Web. If you've read it, please let me know what you thought. I would love to talk about it. Even though I didn't love it that much, I would still love to talk about it. And in fact, because I didn't absolutely adore it or absolutely hate it, I really quite want to talk about it because I don't feel like anything can be said that would ruin it for me. <laughs> nor do I feel like I don't want to say anything because I just get really angry and ranty about it. So I'm really down for discussing this book, if anyone would like to. If you haven't read it yet, um, tell me if you're still going to. Tell me if you've read the first three and you really want to read this one, or if you're going to read all four at once as a new series read. And of course, let me know what you think of doing reviews, because I don't do them very often, and I would love to know whether or not you enjoyed it. All right, have a great night. Bye.